Now in this video let us talk about sequence in python. So there are four major type we will talk. First is string, second is list, third is tuple, fourth is reach. So the string has a name suggest. I have already talked about it. String is a representation of the group of characters. So you can either keep string with a single quotation mark or you can keep string with a double quotation mark. What I mean by that? So if I want to store string with a variable, so the previous example we were taking the variable name as x, y, z, but for a variable name you can take any name. There are no restrictions apart, you cannot use capital letters. Also, if you want to define two words, like I am defining my name, I am using underscore to define these four. You can use spaces between their variable name. So for this example, I am taking the name, my underscore name, and my variable name. If I want to store string that is my name, I can either store as shom here. I am using single quotation mark. And if I try to print it out simply, so suppose I try to do that my name, you can see this got printed. If I try to do the same thing using double quotation mark, that is also valid. If I do it again, Here you can see it give us the result. So my measure is goes to my understand that you use double quotation mark or double quotation mark. My major aim was to make you understand you can, you can either use double quotation mark or single quotation mark. By make a habit if you are using single quotation mark, make sure you use single quotation mark at all places. If you are making as a habit a double quotation mark, try to use it all the places. So the string plays really is a very important part for everything. We will be performing a lot of stuff what is string and in the string section but let me give it a try. So if you want to print any variable using the print command all you have to do is type the print command in the slope given the quotation marks like previously we were doing while printing string just directly name it variable name. So here I am giving the variable name as my underscore name you can see it I got my result and if I do the same with the string I can do it with print and I can just give the double quotation mark and print it here. While printing a variable you have to pass a value. While printing anything else your value should be a string or integer or anything else. The second sequence data type is list. List in Python is similar to arrays and in other language, it can be C or Java. So let's represent a group of elements. The main difference between list and array is that list can store different type of element. It can store string, it can store integer, it can store float, it can store different type of data type. Whereas array have restriction of storing different data types. If you have created an array in C language or Java language. If you are storing in integer, you have to store only integers. But with this list, this is not the case. Also, list can grow dynamically in memory, but arrays are fixed size. They cannot grow at runtime. So if I want to increase the size of list, I can do it at any point of time. Let us take an example of list, understand it in a better manner. Let me take a variable name and I might take at my list. And to initial list, open up bracket and we have to give a value. If I am giving the string as my the first value, all I have to do is to give the value. If I want to give a second value, then I have to use a comma. As I have said in the definition, list represent group of elements. If I want to add a new element, suppose in the integer let us 5. If I want to add a float also 6.3 and that is sufficient for now if i want to close this list i just need to use closing bracket once that is done presenter and you can see this is my list is ready if i try to print this particular list let me use my print command and parentheses i just need to give variable name and that's done so there is my list i have three elements one is string that is shwobam Second is int that is 5 and third is 6.3 6 that is float. Now you can perform a lot of tasks with the list and lists are really important. Whenever I want to create anything that is some answers, 
some field of form and list is really important because you can take many answers and you can add them into a single element and you just have one variable and you can store a lot of many values no i think you might this is the right moment for you to understand the numbering system and the address of all type different type of the data type that you are using if I talk about zero at any point of time, if I say give me the zero element, that is the zero element. That means I want the first element. If I print zero element of this list, let me take print and if I give zero element, how you take, you open a bracket, you give which element you want and then you close the bracket. If I press enter, you can see zero element means I got shubham. If I say give me the first element that means I will get 5. If I say give me a second element that means it will give me 6.3. So if I take an example with this again. If I take my list and open a bracket put the value of second. What do you think what you are going to get in the comment section. 0 shubham 1 is 5 and second one is 6.3. Right we want 6.3. So that is how it is divided. So it was basically for any programming language. And you might have seen different type of means over this. So programmers are really obsessed with zero. So it's an important for you to understand the fundamental. The next type is the data type we want to talk about this tuple. Tuple are similar to list. Tuple contain the group of element which can be the different types like strings, integer, float or any other different types. And they are separated by commas. But in list we use brackets. But tuple we use parentheses. Where list can be modified. So if I create a list. There are only three elements. I can add a fourth element at any point of time. But if I create a tuple. I have added only three elements. I cannot change that. Let us understand tuple also. If I take an example. If I create a variable. That is tp. And I want to initiate the tuple. All I have to do is to open the parentheses. And I need to give it the value. That is an integer. And what if I give the second value as string. So I can give a second value as unwired. And let me give up the third value as maybe integer only. And then. Then the fourth value again as a string. So maybe learning. And to close the double, all I have to do is using closing parentheses. Just press enter. So we have created a tuple. Now we cannot change this particular tuple. That is, it is immutable. If I print this tuple, you can see it got a value. If I try to extract the value of this tuple, maybe for zero position, all I have to do is print print tp try with zero private zero position you can say i got the value of 15 that's mean if you want to extract any individual element all you have to do is give the address that means the reference point the first reference point is zero then one then two then three i have tried to extract a value which is not available maybe i try to extract a value of four that is tp and then the value of four you can see I get an error that is the tuple index is out of range. So our current range is 0, 1, 2, 3. And if I try to enter a 4, it is out of range. Like I have performed different tasks or tuples or which we will be understanding in the later section. The last one that I want to talk about is range. If you suppose really you want to print 1 to 10, what I have to do? Print 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. Maybe you might take some loops. That is, you give instruction to the computer from 1, print to 2, 10. That's how you can do it. At this point of time, we'll be using range. So if I take a variable, that is R. If I want to describe a range, I need to give a command that is range. And then open and close the brackets. And now here, I want to specify from which point I need to start. The second thing I need to pass is till which variable I need to go through and the third thing is what is the gap I need to maintain so supposedly I need to start from 1 and till which point I need to go is 10 
10 will not be included. It will be going till 9. 1 will be including till 9. And then what is the gap I need to maintain? If the gap is 1, just don't need to enter anything. You just need to close it. But if the gap is more than 1, 1 is by default value. But if the gap is 2, all you have to do is get 2. So now all the values are in from range of 1 to 10, which has a gap of 2. And that means 1, then 3, then 5, then 7. So likewise. So now our has this particular range. Now what I need to do is I want to print this particular value. But if I try to print out one directly, it will just the range. I need to get the value of this range so that the value that inside this particular range are the point 1, 3 and so on. So what I can do is I can convert this R into the list. So all I have to do is just make sure this Q and then convert this R list. And then I want to bring this and want to print this Q. And you can see I got a list that is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So at this point of time, you might have understand that how you to convert. If I want to try directly, instead of taking a new variable, I can just perform it here. So what I can do is I might take R is variable. I can directly put a list and then inside the list, I can give a range. And the inside that range, I might give the value that if I want to just print for 1 to 10, so 1 will be the default gap. I can just give 1 to 10. Let me complete my list. This is the list of type we did and now I will just need to print that. Here you go. So that's how you can do it play with range. Range is really important. It is important while going through the loops. It produces a lot of wealth. This is the bad thing of Python because if you play with C, if you play with Java, if you play with C++, this is the most big headache thing to go with and do inside the loops. But range also a lot of problem. In the next lesson, I will be talk about the C sets and also about the dictionary which are also known as mapping. I hope you really enjoy this video. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, comment and share this video with your friend. I will see you guys in my next video.